Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at differential operators. That is um, the equivalent uh, to matrices uh, in a finite dimensional vector space, uh, but in an infinite dimensional vector space. So uh, we can construct the following table of relations. We have our general operator, something uh, like the following. We can have the position operator, which we've already seen, uh, or the momentum operator, or the energy operator H, the Hamiltonian, which is equal to um, the momentum operator squared over 2m plus the potential energy operator. And we sometimes have been calling this, this term T the kinetic energy operator. Uh, and written out in terms of when we were doing Schrodinger wave mechanics, uh, we were writing things in terms of functions, uh, which are then infinite dimensional vectors in our complex Hilbert spaces. Uh, and so we have the following forms. So uh, writing these out as represented in the position basis, the x operator uh, is just simply the position x, the real number. The momentum operator, on the other hand, is a bit more interesting. Uh, it takes the form minus i h bar d by dx, as we've seen a couple of times now. Uh, this is in one dimension. And then the Hamiltonian takes the following form. It's p squared over 2m. p is defined here, and so it must be minus h bar squared over 2m d by dx squared. Uh, and the um, potential operator in the position basis is just the potential as a function of x. Out of interest, although it won't be a key focus in this course, we could also write things in the uh, momentum basis. So first, the momentum operator, in this case, takes the trivial form p, just the real number, much as x did in the uh, x basis. Uh, the position operator now takes the form minus i h bar d by dp, and the Hamiltonian now must take the form p squared over 2m, where p is just the real number p, uh, and v now has to be a function of, uh, excuse me, uh, v, the potential, is now a function of minus i h bar d by dp, where this is now a differential operator acting on functions of p, and is defined by its Taylor series. So we've seen a little bit already of expectation values of operators. In particular, we know that they take the following form. So the expectation value of the operator A, uh, according to, in the uh, state Psi, uh, is just a sandwich between the bracket of Psi with itself. So um, a particular set of operators we're very interested in are powers of the position and momentum operators. In fact, that's basically everything we ever really want to look at, um, in this course at least. Uh, I'm not really familiar with many situations in quantum mechanics where you want to look at expectation values, I'm just talking shit. And then say we'd like to uh, find the expectation value of uh, the position operator to the power n. Well, we can act that in from the left uh, as follows. So uh, the position operator to the power n acting on the identity operator is just the position operator to the power n. The identity operator is like the one of operators. Uh, and over here, uh, we've brought it through the integral, which might look a bit dodgy because this is integrating over x. But this is, remember, this is the operator um, x to the n, rather than uh, the eigenvalue x, which this is integrating over. So it's actually fine to bring that through the integral here. Um, but then x operator acting on state x, this is by definition the eigenstate of the position operator. Uh, and so we can act this n times, and we just um, bring down n powers of the, um, the eigenvalue associated with that, so it's x to the n. And now it's trapped inside the integral here uh, and can't be taken out because this is now, in fact, the thing that's being integrated over. So um, we'd like to uh, evaluate the expectation value of this operator. And so what we need to do is sandwich it between states psi, which again can fit in through the integral here, uh, and we get the following result. Uh, so we have x in the product psi, which is psi of x, um, the x to the n can just pull out through here, it doesn't do anything to these states, uh, and so we get the final result. The expectation value of the position operator that raised to the power n 
is equal to the integral over all of x of the modulus of psi squared uh, times x to the n. Now this makes sense in terms of uh, statistics because um, psi, modulus psi x squared is the probability density. So if we just integrate that by itself, we get 1. Um, but uh, if we wanted to evaluate expectation values of, of different quantities in statistics, we would um, average those things weighted by the uh, probability distribution. And that's exactly what we're finding here in quantum mechanics as well. Uh, to find the expectation value of momentum operators raised to the power n, we can do exactly the same thing using uh, the resolution of the identity into momentum states. Uh, and all the working works as before. The momentum operator acting on the momentum eigenstate gives the momentum eigenvalue. We sandwich it between states psi. And so we arrive at the same expression, but everything written in terms of momentum rather than position. Again, there's this equivalent between uh, writing things in terms of position and momentum in quantum mechanics. Okay, so um, let's look at the hermeticity of these operators, because when we looked at finite dimensional vector spaces, Hilbert spaces, we said that our um, matrices that we were using had to be Hermitian. So there should be an equivalent of that statement for differential operators. So uh, I'm just going to state the, uh, the general expression for finding if an operator is Hermitian or not. So uh, the operator A is Hermitian, A equals A dagger, if and only if this statement here holds the integral of the operator acting on phi of x, a uh, complex conjugate, right, because this is a differential operator, this is a fun complex function, so then this thing must be a complex function, so it's a co uh, complex conjugate, not the Hermitian conjugate. Um, multiplying psi of x, integrated over all of x, is equal to the complex conjugate of phi uh, of x, multiplying the operator acting on psi of x, integrated over x. And that has to hold true for all arbitrary phi of x and psi of x complex functions. Okay, so it's best to just take it as a definition. You can derive it, and it's not too complicated, uh, but it's uh, beyond the scope of this course. So uh, let's take a look at a couple of important cases. So the first uh, emission operator, or the first operator we'd like to confirm as emission, is the position operator. A is equal to x. Um, so we just need to substitute it into this form and check we can get it into that form. Uh, and that's quite trivial in this case. So the left-hand side gives this. Um, but the position operator in the position basis is just the position. Um, this is written, by the way, in the position basis. Of course, we could have written it in the momentum basis if we wanted to. Um, so, uh, but the position is a real number, we know, and so we can bring down the complex conjugate to here, it doesn't affect x, and we can happily bring the x over to here. Um, and finally, uh, the eigenvalue x um, multiplying the function psi of x could equally well have been written operator x, because the um, x operator acting on the function of x will just turn into x acting on the function of x. And so we've proven the right-hand side. And so uh, the operator x is Hermitian. And that's good news because uh, that means that the eigenstates of this operator are real, and those are, of course, our positions, and we'd like our positions uh, to be measurable, and we'd like them to be real. So a slightly more tricky case is uh, the momentum operator. Uh, we get this expression where I've used the form minus i h bar d by dx for the momentum operator in the position basis. The complex conjugate um, of this thing, it changes the sign of this part uh, and it complex conjugates the function phi. Um, so how do we get the operator onto this part? Well, we can use um, integration by parts. So we know that this expression equals the following. So um, it equals uh, the integral uh, Evaluated at the limits um, minus sticking the derivative on the other part. So uh, we have so um, we've got a minus i h bar d by dx here. So this part is just p acting on psi, which is what we'd like. Let's write that. So um, the left hand side equals the right hand side, provided this term equals zero. But this must equal zero because we're evaluating phi star of x and psi of x. Um, but these are functions which live in our infinite dimensional complex Hilbert space. And remember, it's the definition of the Hilbert space that the states be square normalizable, 
So uh, if we take the modulus square of any state and evaluate it at plus or minus infinity, um, it must go to zero uh, because um, uh, otherwise we wouldn't be able to carry out a normalization condition that the integral of modulus psi squared um, over uh, minus infinity to infinity is equal to one. So actually these must be zero for our states to be normalizable. And so we've proven the hermeticity of the momentum operator is as written as a differential operator. Uh, so again, that's good news. Okay, thank you for your time.